I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I've been doing videos on fear. I will come to that. But I want to share with you what I shared with my WhatsApp mentorship group this morning. I woke up around four something and I posted this in the WhatsApp mentorship group before I want to share it with you. I just came from dropping my granddaughter and I just do I'm saying this to let you know that we are not idle people, we are not lousy people on social media. I'm a very busy, very articulate person. I want to look at the economy of Abraham. When we sing Abraham's blessings are mine, hallelujah, do you understand what you are singing? When you sing Father Abraham has many sons, do you understand what you are singing? I've tried to look at the sociology of the kingdom of God and the spirituality. Pentecostalism and the African church has concentrated only on the spirituality and the promises of God and what God can do and what God has done without concentrating on the responsibility of the kingdom. And I want to share this with you. Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Let me read from verse 13. One who had escaped came and reported this to Abraham the Hebrew. Now Abraham was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorites, a brother of Eshcol and Anna, all of whom were allied with Abraham. When Abraham heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out 318 men born in his household. Please note that word. Born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Uh, biblical scholars believe that that word Dan, there, that location, was edited after the incidents. Uh, that Dan had not been named Dan then. Number two, the word Hebrew was first used to describe Abraham in Genesis chapter 10, verse 21 to 22. But the word Hebrew in those days was a derogatory word by non-Jewish people, non-Hebrew people. It was used derogatorily to describe somebody who was a migrant, somebody who was propertyless, somebody who was dependent. It was a very derogatory terminology. It was used to refer to people of low social class. And if you can extrapolate back to Europe prior to the First World War, Second World War, Hitler's War, the Jews were discriminated against, treated as second class citizens in several European countries. They lived in the outskirts and they were, their areas were fenced around. They were, had limited time to come into their um, quarters. And there are some mills that are prevalent in Europe today, particularly Italy, that were made from that are made from the the part of um, sheep that were thrown away, cast, cut out, that they don't eat. That the Jews um, then they they used to prepare special delicacies, but because the Jews have changed their history and have become accepted as first class citizens. That meal is now selling as a first-class meal. So you can change your family history. You can change the way you are looked at. We can change Africa. We can change the perception of Africans. A lot of these fellows, the Chinese, a few years back, they were looked at, um, at derogatorily during Chairman Mao's time when they were riding bicycles and wearing felt clothes. 
the Koreans were looked down on, but they've built their economies, they've built, developed themselves, built good governance, and people now respect them. Nobody will respect this color if we are not responsible. Pray, use your head. I get irritated by the way black people pray. You go to our black churches. Yeah, man. Amen. And they don't use their heads. Amen. Preach it, man. Nonsense. You go to white churches, they are calm. They are thinking. They are meditating. Abraham had 318 servants. Number one, Abraham had a covenant relationship with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. So forget all this, your ancestral causes and all that. Abraham came from the awe of the Chaldeans, which is present day Iraq. They worshiped idols, but he had a covenant relationship with God. Start a covenant relationship with God. Your ancestral causes don't matter. Your background do not matter. I come from an idolatrous background. Those backgrounds don't worry me. They don't trouble me. Number two, be economically responsible. Abraham became an agriculturist. He had flock. That the thing, God must have a medium to bless, not your tongues, not your prayer. God must have a medium to act on. When he wanted to multiply the, the, the flock of Jacob, he did that with the flock. He created you with a substance in his hand, sand. So God must have something to multiply. If you don't have it, you're just praying up and down. You're wasting your time. So Abraham's flock increased. Lot's flock increased. And then there was contention. But now listen, 318 men born in Abraham's house. And men, they were trained, we will come to training. When men go to war, they must be of marriage age. The newly married people don't go to war, according to Jewish tradition. So Abraham had 318 men. That means they were married. That means Abraham had 636 people, at least adults, minus their children, born in Abraham's house. That means their parents were still alive, most likely. Let me be very conservative. Abraham had about a thousand people in his house. If Abraham, <coughs> excuse me, if Abraham was feeding his servants with one dollar a day for breakfast, that's one thousand dollars for breakfast. If they ate two meals a day, that's two thousand dollars for breakfast. If they ate for 30 days, that's sixty thousand dollars for breakfast. Just imagine that, that Abraham was able to, I mean, for, for, for food, Abraham was able to spend $60,000 for feeding. Let's say it's 100 um, naira per meal. 100 naira times 1,000 people is 100,000. <clears throat> excuse me, times 30 days is 3 million. 3 million. Am I correct? But it's a large sum of money. How many people are you employing? How many people are you paying salaries? What is your workforce? I read this passage about 26 years back and I made up my mind I was going to be an employer of labor. Maybe I'm approaching the 200 people mark. I want to build more businesses. By the time that Polytechnic starts working, I should be getting close to the Abraham mark. 
How close are you to the Abraham mark? All of us might not be Abraham, but if Abraham's blessings are ours, Abraham can be an economic standard. Let me ask you a simple question. What is the size of Abraham's real estate that these people are living in? Think about these things. Meditate upon them and ask yourself, are you doing anything that God can multiply? Do you have the desire and the intention to be an employer of labor? Are you thinking about productivity? Are you thinking of a business empire? Forget this word carnality sometimes and start facing reality. We want tights. We are prophesying upon people. Your blessing will be this. What do they do? What do they do? How are they living their lives? Then I want to add something. Look at the relationship between Abraham and God, whether it is the way we go to church and do things now that they do that he did, or the kind of prayer, fire, fire prayer, and noisy lifestyle that we had that Abraham had. May God help us. I have a long way to go, and I believe God is ahead of me, and I'm pursuing his vision and his purpose for me. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Please subscribe to this channel for your own good to learn and share with people so that we can free Africa. My concentration is Africa. We can free Africa from this derogatory outlook people have concerning us. And join my WhatsApp mentorship group by sending a message to plus 234-7052-13. Six seven six three. God bless you.